Hello, everybody. Dorothy Morgan here, professional astrologer. We're going to talk about the astrology for Saturday, April 9th. Then we're going to roll the dice so we can get a little insight, additional insight. And as always, we'll pull a card. All right, so let's get started. What's the astrology look like for Saturday, the 9th? And I've done this chart for super early in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. And remember, no ascendant, no midheaven. We don't talk about the houses because this is a, we're talking about aspects and what sign planets are in this way, because we're all in a different place on the planet. And so that means the house placement of things will be different. And so will the ascendant in midheaven. So trust me on that. So we won't talk about that because we don't need to. We get a lot of content with this. If you want the personal content, then, you know, book a reading. <laughs> we can do that for you. What I wanted to talk about for today, for Saturday, April 9th, is the uh, square between the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon. The moon is making that aspect. It's the faster of the two. And this is the first quarter. Uh, some books call it the second quarter. It's the square, the first waxing square. It's a waxing square between the sun and the moon. And that represents a period in time of, it could be stress, it could be tension, um, growth takes effort, events, what we are trying to accomplish takes efforts. Now, nine months ago on July 9th, we had a new moon that was in the same area. It was like right about nine, 18 degrees of cancer. So look back to that new moon um, in July of 2021, nine months ago, and see what that looked like for you. I think that's this chart right here. Yeah, the new moon, July 9th. And that's what it looked like then. And so we're going to come to this chart, to the, back to this chart today. You know, we've, we've had nine months of, of growth and purposeful and it, intentions. So that's why it's always so important, if you choose it to be important, to create new moon rituals and new moon intentions. Because sometimes we don't even know what we're planting. We have those ideas, those new moons, the zodiac sign they're in, always about planting seeds regard, in regard to that zodiac sign in addition to your house placement of where the new moon is. And so again, back on July 9th, when you made your new moon intentions in whatever house it is for you as well, that is being active now, activated now. And that's just like when the plant, you know, you plant a seed and the first, you know, for a little while, it's struggling to get to the surface. If there's a frost, it doesn't survive. If it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it, but some of the things do. And just like I explained in my Patreon group today, and that's a way you can come in and support me, if you will. Um, I explained that it's just like, I mean, if you know sunflower seeds, right? As soon as they hit the surface, you know, they're, if there's a frost, they're dead. If even, you know, your cat walks on them, snaps them, they're gone. But the end of the season, when it's, when they're, when they're all done and you try to pull them out, the roots they have are really strong. So the things, the point of that whole story is the things that you're focusing on that take effort right now, and it's worth taking effort and you know, it's not something you need to let go of, then it has survival skills, whatever that is, whatever project, thoughts, ideas, dreams, and it can, um, with work and determination, you will be able to accomplish what you're looking for. All right, I'm going to leave us with that for the astrology. Let's roll the dice. Now's the time for you to, oops, I dropped that one. It came up, Sag. We'll leave it. Now's the time to ask a question if you have one. Good old Neptune. Neptune and Sagittarius in the 11th house. I rolled, I rolled Neptune yesterday, I do believe, or the day before. I can't quite remember. Neptune is our spiritual path, you know, um, it, it's about the, having compassion, love and compassion for ourselves and others, right? If we don't have, I think the Dalai Lama says, if we don't have love and compassion, we have nothing at all. And so it's, um, I don't know if he said that. I think I read it, but it's just a really good statement, no matter who said it, right? And so with Neptune in the sign of Sagittarius, and that's foreign countries and foreign places, and it's what you believe in. And the 11th house represents groups and friends. So for not for all of us, of course, because not all of us um, have interest in what's happening in other parts of the world, even if there's a war, it doesn't interest everybody. However, this is an opportunity for somebody or some of us to um, really engage in how we can make a difference. Neptune making, having that compassion for others in Sagittarius, countries foreign to your native land, right? And 
in the 11th house and that 11th house is hopes and dreams as well as groups of people so somebody has a really clear message here to get started on those something that has to do with groups of people now you know what else this can be besides looking at you know the global thing if this is messages for you maybe you're getting ready to start a new a new metaphysical group of some kind right as the teacher the leader the person who's sharing their knowledge that's a good sign for that too we're still in April. Everything is still full, full force forward ahead. Pluto will retrograde at the very end of the month. That one doesn't seem to stop us for much. All right, the card that we're going to pull. What's the next card? What's the card? The only card. Great mystery. <laughs> That's the Aurora Borealis, which is a beautiful card. So if you want to support me here on YouTube, you can donate. That would be awesome for lots of free content. But you, all you have to do is, you know, if you like it, thumbs up, comment below, and share in your um, your groups, and that helps a lot. And I appreciate that. I appreciate all that help. A lot of you are always here, always supporting me, and it's just like I'm full of gratitude that I've created all this this beautiful community. It's it's fantastic. So we have the card, the Great Mystery. What is that about, right? So first off, I can see the Aurora Borealis. We were talking about that recently on, on the, when, when this video premieres. So it was pretty cool. So this great mystery, it's, um, so, you know, trust, trust what you know, trust what you feel, right? Um, it, and it also represents, you know, like the seeds that we're planting and, and trusting that, you know, what's, you know, what is meant for us is going to bloom and flourish. We have to get into that space of trust. The, the great mystery, you know, is because we're really not sure. We're all here for a purpose and a process, but we have to, I mean, it, how much of a mystery is that? It is a mystery because how many people ask, why am I here? What am I doing? What's the purpose? Purpose is to love, to have compassion, to enjoy life. And we have to do other stuff too, because we're humans and that's what our society is like right now. But what else does that great mystery tell us? Here, I'll, I'll open this up and see if it tells me any more than what I remember. Have faith, everything's manifesting as it should be. I love that, yes. Change can happen in a heartbeat. Oh, that's so true. Wow, wow. So about being patient and divinely guided and trusting that it's very air energy but it also feels that miss it feels very very much like allowing that flow i think we grabbed that card yesterday all right so we have this flow go let's go and flow and and at this first quarter moon see the things that are really uh strong and healthy and let's focus on that even though it takes a little effort just like gardening it doesn't just happen it takes effort, but then the results are fantastic. So work hard on that. All right. I'm going to leave us with that. That was my Capricorn moon speaking. Work hard on that. <laughs> That's always me. All right, everybody take good care of blessings. I'm very grateful for you all. Namaste.